Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to go through an overview of your AQA GCSE English Language Paper 2. So what we can expect from each question, how to structure your time in the exam, what you should be looking for in each question and what the structure of your answer should be. Welcome to your AQA GCSE English Language Paper 2 overview. Paper 2 is just as important as Paper 1, so you need to dedicate the same amount of revision time for it. And yes, you do need to revise. Because Paper 2 focuses on non-fiction writers' viewpoints and perspectives, you may be asked to read autobiographies, journals, blogs, newspaper or magazine articles. The possibilities really are endless. So get yourself ahead by exposing yourself to as many different non-fiction texts as you can. On the paper, you are required to read two texts, one from the 19th century and one from the 21st. Despite being from different time periods, the texts will be linked by their topic. For example, they could both be about travel. The focus for the paper is on writers' viewpoints and perspectives which means you need to be analytical, evaluative and thorough about writers' opinions and experiences and how they choose and craft their writing to demonstrate this. Like Paper 1, Paper 2 is worth 50% of your GCSE. 80 marks are up for grabs in a time of 1 hour and 45 minutes. You have 4 questions for the reading section and 1 question for the writing section. Let's look at how to approach the paper from the beginning. Like paper one, the first 15 minutes are pivotal. This time you have 15 minutes to read the two texts, but you'll be very pleased to hear that they are shorter in paper two. This gives you 45 minutes left of the hour for section A to spend answering the questions. In terms of reading the texts, I would recommend reading the questions first to give you an idea of what you need to take notice of. You could highlight your first reading of the text this way. For example, if question two asks you to summarise the student's uniform in both texts, when you're reading, you could be highlighting any information about the student's uniforms. This may well save you precious time later on. Top tips for reading the texts. Read the questions beforehand. Read the text carefully and thoroughly. Jot down the tone of each text. Jot down your initial thoughts on the writer's perspectives and highlight anything that you think will help you answer questions two to four. Okay, so let's start looking at the questions now. So question one is worth four marks, so we recommend you spending about five minutes on this question. Question one asks you to focus on source A and test your AO1 skills. This is your ability to pick out key information. You will be asked to focus on a short part of the text, usually eight or so lines and you'll have to select the four true statements in a list of eight. Sounds simple? It is, but follow these top tips to guarantee that you get all four marks. Spend no more than five minutes on this question. Before you shade in the box that you think is true, put a little dot next to the ones you think are fact. This prevents you from having to cross out any mistakes. Some statements may appear as if they could be true, but go back to the text and pinpoint where the answer could be. Remember to focus on the correct lines. Question two will ask you to summarise similarities or differences and is worth eight marks, meaning you should spend no longer than 10 minutes on this question. You will need to use both sources and be able to select two or three similarities or differences about the specific focus they have given you. For example, the students' uniforms. Summarise each of the comments in turn and you must explore perceptive inferences from both texts. Inference is what is implied. What can you guess based on your reading between the lines? For example, the students in source A wear a shirt and tie, implying that the school may be in a more affluent area of town than source B students who wear polo shirts. Here's our top tips for question two. No analysis is required, so don't waste your time. Clarify the similarities or differences with a quote. Two or three points of reference from each text. Examine what the writers imply about the issue too. Moving on to question three, which is worth 
12 marks, so about 12 minutes on this question. Question three tests you on your AO2 language analysis skills. The question is worded similarly to question two on paper one, and will ask you, how does the writer use language to describe a certain focus? Take note of which source you are asked to focus on and correct line numbers. And again, you are analyzing the effect of the language techniques the writer uses. Top tips, select your three best diveable quotes, identify and analyze the writer's choices of linguistic devices, i.e. talking about things like metaphors, fact, etc. Remember, this is a non-fiction text, so how do they use techniques to seem trustworthy or to seek their purpose? Remember to use the correct source and line numbers. Question four is always the big one, and it's worth 16 marks, so you want to use your remaining 18 minutes here. The question focuses on both texts and always asks you to compare how the writers convey their different perspectives and or attitudes about something specific to the sources. For example, different attitudes towards education. You must focus on how the writers both successfully convey their perspectives, what methods they use and why. Therefore, you are expected to analyze tone, language and structure. You should aim to write three good comparative points. Top tips, you should have three solid comparative points with multiple quotes from each source. Consider if the writers are successful at meeting their purpose. If they are trying to persuade, do they do it well? Explain how you know this. Analyze the methods both writers use and stay focused on the specific task. Lastly, we come to question five, which is your 40 marker writing task. And you need to spend your remaining 45 minutes planning, writing and editing your non-fiction writing piece. This is your moment to shine and prove to the examiner that you write with purpose, flair, for a specific audience and can convey your own perspective too. You'll be given a statement on a particular issue related to what was presented in section A. For example, if the reading section texts were about school, you may be asked to write a letter to your head teacher persuading them to limit homework to only key stage four students. You will be asked to write a specific text from either speech, letter, article, essay or guide. Like paper one, 24 marks are dedicated to AO5. This is your content, organisation, purpose, format and linguistic choices. 16 marks are then dedicated to AO6. This is your SPAG plus vocabulary and sentence structure choices. OK, so top tips for question five. Spend 10 minutes planning your writing. You must have a consistent argument and you must be able to develop this. Plan your format carefully. How can you prove your text is a speech? Plan what is appropriate for your audience. Write for 30 minutes maximum and ensure you are using appropriate linguistic devices. But please don't just shoot on a forest. Don't worry, more about this in a later video. Use ambitious vocabulary. Have a consistent argument where you can respond with counter arguments too. And lastly, and very importantly, use the remaining five minutes to proofread your work. And there we have it. Your AQA GCSE English Language Paper 2 overview is done. Ouch! This is why in some videos I write explain scratches.